welcome to Reality Blackout, where I recap the top five reality show moments of the past week, blackout style. In this week's number five clip, Tamar and Vince take their arguing across the pond to jolly old London. It's pretty clear that all of the couple's miscommunications and misunderstandings come from them being opposites. While Tamar is a get your feelings out type of woman, Vince is more of a shut down, keep it inside type of man. I hope we can have a relaxing, romantic time while we're here. What's wrong? I think you should just not so much focus on yourself. What did I say? You started popping off at your mouth. Your mouth was running. Your mouth was out of control. So what happened? I'm talking about something serious. You want to get attitude. Every time I say something, he takes it in the worst possible way. You don't know what you say because your mouth's so smart. You want to have a smart mouth. Tamar, you said a lot of smart All those things you said were just lies. I like, have not so said why... one thing. You see how you get loud and loud? That's ignorant. All that ain't necessary. Just sit down. That's annoying and it's ridiculous when you do stuff like that. Your mouth started getting popping. I don't have an attitude. I give no about Vince walking back to the hotel. <gasps> you can blow all you want. That does not get anywhere with me. You don't know how to be. All you can do is breathe. He doesn't like it. But that's what you like to do. The shutdown thing is very real. I thought you was working on not shutting down. We're both trying to make a point. And I think what we don't do is stop and hear the other ones. God, why you always miss it? I know you miss it because you just hear you. He doesn't need to talk to me like this. Really trying to go home right now. Here's to London and having fun. Even though Tamar and Vince fight a lot, I'm praying that their relationship does not fall victim to the reality show curse. It's obvious that Laura... Louder has no storyline this season. So in order for her to stay relevant, she's fallen into the role of the villain. In this week's number four clip, Laura needs to really stop playing silly high school mind games with Jackie because the only person looking dumb, untrustworthy, and crazy in this whole situation is Laura. Laura. I think that Laura wants to be friends, but she wants to be friends on her terms. It's like you're just being mine. Something wrong with you. What's wrong with you? This works for me. I'm doing this for my own reasons. It's good for Laura. Laura has her own issues. It's been a long time coming. In due time. There's two sides to every story. I'm going to do you like you did me. I don't know what the hell Laura's talking about. I will call it back at you. I like yeah, you Laura. Like I like Jackie. You don't want me to talk about Come on. you? I'm gonna talk about your fat ass gut. She's too old. You old ass hack. Get that old big ass fingernail out of here. She shouldn't even be in our in our in our group. Bitch, f you. She's so insecure. I've been hearing that you're like, we're not cool. I don't f with her. I don't like her. I'm gonna get you, bitch. You like her too. Best friends to the end. But you wanna keep insulting her and f with her. What's up with that? I will yeah. f Laura up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So all BS aside. Do you want to build a friendship and go forward with me? I always keep my enemies close. No, we're fine. But really, no. At heart, she's a fake bitch. I was honest. I was real. And then here you are playing me like a puppet. You are gonna feel how I felt in every aspect. You gonna feel all the pain that I felt. That's what I do. This is going exactly where I wanted to go. I get it, Laura. You're a scorned friend. But sometimes you've just got to put on your big girl panties and get over it. Great hustlers are born, not made. And in the Harris household, little hustlers don't fall too far from the big tree. In this week's number three clip, the Harris children decide to open a lemonade stand to make some money. With the help of Daddy T.I., Rapper Nelly, the cuteness of Major, and Lemonade full of a lot of extra love. <laughs> There's no way that this business can fail. Did you wash your hands? You gotta wash your hands first. That's the kids. <laughs> now that we got to pay people to drink. <laughs> 
Oh, he, he just licked a living. <laughs> All right, let's go. Stop licking stuff. And then put it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's the taste. It's going to, you know, I take care of these people. You know, they clean off my taste buds. Thank you. Mr. Regular. That one good. Y'all just see that. Hey, kid, hey, Major, get out that sugar. We're going to have to discount that. How much money I get? Tell all your customers, thank you. Thank you so much. Don't fear. I'm about 46% sure that citric acid kills 99.5% of four-year-old's germs. My favorite southern peaches have returned for their fifth season. In the season opener, we catch up with the old wives and are introduced to the first of two new housewives. In this week's number two clip, we meet cast edition Kenya Moore. The blogs are saying that since Nene got all refined and Hollywood on us, that the producers were looking for a woman to come in and stir up the pot. Enter Kenya. I'm Kenya Moore. I decided to move to Atlanta. I am a hustler. No one knows who she is. I was the second black woman to be crowned Miss USA. I know she was Miss USA. Have you ever seen me in a magazine? I wouldn't be called dead doing some of the work that I've seen her do. I'm not gay, but that's pretty hot. Sexy, strong, and who really represents black women well. I was looking for an Adam's apple. I'm not trying to be the mean girl. You obviously didn't have time to shave. Look at me. Why are you here? Looking like a hot ass mess. Criticism is only to help. I don't want to see coochie crack. Coochie crack. Coochie crack. Coochie crack. And your ass crack. People are crazy. Why I work are for you the villain agency to to because I will beat a bitch down. Should I be afraid? <laughs> I always have security with me. Cause you a lot to handle. I don't want to handle. <laughs> Kenya Shore is coming in like a lion. And from the look of things to come, She's not going to go out like a lamb. If there ever was a can of whoop ass that needed to be cracked open on someone, it's Julie. Julie may have managed to leave Mexico in one piece, but she showed up to the reunion with a target on her chest. In this week's number one clip, Julie thinks that just because she's moved on since the end of the show, that the other girls would have too. Well, if Julie had bothered to watch any of the other eight seasons of reunion shows, she would have known that bad girls are pros at holding a grudge. Julie, I'm, 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 I'm a little annoyed with you. You know why? Why? Because you pop mad in the house. Get the Julie says she want to be the baddest bitch in the house. What's good? Julie, I'm not promoting violence. Oh. 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 You just got your head bashed in. Shut the up before I do it again, ho. I was going to manipulate the situation in my favor. Bitch, shut up. You boring with that long ass right. stop. Nah, I, I kind of want to punch Julie again. I'll punch her ass again. Oh, Y'all were talking so much earlier, and now everybody's on hush. That's true. <laughs> that Julie received today, guide her and protect her and let her know if you talk that you better be able to back it up. Well, season nine is a wrap and we'll have to wait until January for the new season of the Bad Girls Club Atlanta. 
hopefully this new batch of bad girls can come up with some original taglines. Because the first time that I hear replacements or weak sauce, I'm changing the channel. Bonus clip time! This week's Keeping It 100 bonus clip comes from Nicki Minaj, My Truth. Let me just say, I'm not a Nicki Minaj fan, but I gave part one of her three-part album promo show a chance. I went in with an open mind, thinking that Nicki could win me over and convert me into a barb. I can appreciate her drive, the love that she has for her fans, and her work ethic when she's not showing up late. However, I'm turned all the way off by her diva attitude, delusion of grandeur, and her voice. People purposely don't see the strides that I've made for hip hop. I feel like it's a milestone for hip hop and just for black women in general. I feel like it's a milestone for young black girls everywhere. So that just makes me feel really, really proud. Hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa. They'll never thank me for opening doors. Sit your ass down. It's like I always got other to worry about. I can't just focus on this. I'm gonna be an hour late or am I gonna be two hours late? 15 minutes late, it's nothing. But are you ready now? Literally late to my first day. I'll just see if you out there, so clearly you're not ready. You know, it's annoying. This is really happening. You're out of your mind. You don't watch me eat. It is very overwhelming at times. I'm gonna get this too pussy around here. Where's my funky stuff? I don't like anything that looks like this. I asked to steam this jacket. Where's the steamer? Black and red, those aren't my colors. Please, you, you want a jean vest. I never. Black. How would you describe yourself? A crazy psychopath with great intentions. <laughs> That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Follow the show on Twitter and come right back next week for another roundup of the top five reality show moments of the past week, blackout style.